Hello, I'm Richard Raffin and in this video you're going to see me make a little stick like this. Very difficult to see. Just bring it right up there. And uh, this is called a spillikin. It's going to make... Actually, this is the one I'm going to make. It's going to match this one. And if you're wondering what a spillikin is, um, it's the game of pick-up sticks or uh, Mikado if you're in Europe. So um, I've made a number of sets of these over the years. There are about 260 of them out there somewhere. 36 sticks go inside a box which is about 50 mil diameter, to about 2 inches diameter. And uh, I used to do these at the end of demos when I did a day long demo for relaxation. I can't believe it now. Um, these are all long and down to about an eighth of an inch in the, in the middle. Some of them have loose rings on, uh, loose rings, but you're not going to see that today. So, this is going to be African blackwood and um, let's go. Here, so this is a piece of African blackwood. And the main thing with this uh, job is you want to hold the piece at one end and just support it to the other. You don't do this between centers. So I've got the long nose jaws here and I don't want to pull it into the center. I want to have it tightened in the jaws so that when I bring the center up the wood is not really moving is not moved out of position so that should do it. Just tighten that up. Right and this is going to have a small bead uh, somewhere in the middle um, I've already got one down here, which is this one, so it's going to match this. This is around, uh, uh, in fact, it will, it will match this, so I need some dividers. I'll set this, oops, where are we? I should have got set up properly for this. Right, so if you're making a set of spillikins, you want to make the box first because it's much easier to fit the sticks in the box than the other way around. So I'm going to get this round first, get some light on the subject. Right, so V groove at one end just so that the groans. So with anything this flexible, any press you put in the tool you've got to take up with your fingers. So if you smell burning flesh, you know you're going a bit hard. It might be hurting at that stage too. You just want to get it all round first. Add a bit more into the chuck. So that's that end. That's that end. Now I don't want all the beads in the same place on these things. So that one's going to be there. If you have all the beads in the middle, they won't fit in the box. You find that out the hard way. So finger either side of the wood so that the wood supported on all sides.
jumping around all over the place. And drop the rest very slightly. Now, there's a little kind of build up there, so I've got to come around from underneath. So the dynamics here really of the tool with right hand is pushing the tool against my left thumb which can then push back and that way you set up opposing forces and that gives you the control over the tool. This bulbous end is going to get sanded in the end, so it will be sanded flat. Middle here, this is the nasty bit. Uh, just going to use a smaller skew. This is the, the half inch skew. Whoa, catch! Right. What can happen in this case, because I don't really need the bead, this bead doesn't have to be exactly where it is, so if that catch is really bad, I can shift it slightly sideways. It's shifting slightly sideways. I might have just a bit too much pressure on the tailstock too. a long time since I've done any of these, so I'm well out of practice. Just using the short corner to come round the bead. Now I've got to take away the bead I've just stuffed up. Oh, using the long point, no maybe that's not the best way. Coming with the short corner. Just levering it, levering it off my thumb, and I've also got the bevel, this part of the bevel shoulder riding on the stick part. looking better. Now gently into the bottom of the bead. Can't believe I used to do these things to relaxation at the end of the day. Long demo. essential with these is you do need straight grain timber. Any kind of cross grain it would break at this stage. Slim it down a bit from this side. Oh, it's a little bit too hard into the bottom of the bead there. That should be okay there. Now, coming up to home stretch, so to speak, 
Um, should be cutting down hills on a spindle, but often you can go uphill go steadily. It's a bit more comfortable because the uh, any force of the cut then running uh, into the towards the headstock. So this is going to be one of the paddles which I have in all set. So there's a slight kind of crankshaft effect there but I can cope with that and that's a reasonably good cut. Uh, it's very good up there little bit kind of rough down there because I was cutting uphill so I just come down this that can get better although it's not an issue with this stuff it sounds so well right. right so just try on with uh, 220 with this one Basically just pin pincering around the wood. And it's, uh, long time since I've turned blackwood, so I can't remember its characteristic. But um, there's a fair amount of gunk building up. Oh, that's all right. Some odd little lumps I've got there. They'll probably sand out. I think every turn I should have a go at making a set of these because they're um, always intimidated by the sticks. But they're really just time consuming whereas the, uh, the difficult bit is the box if we're going to turn the box out. portion is cut well so that doesn't need too much sanding. Okay, that's the 240. A bit of uh, three, 320 which is the orange. I don't actually need to worry too much about the paddle bits here because um, they, that's going to get sanded um, on a disc sander. So the only bits which I really need to polish are just about an inch either side of the um, of the bead. So the main object here was just to show you how the how the spindles actually turn. Right, and then there's a bit of scotch bright which will do the middle bits. Just try not to get it caught. Right, so that's the, the turning done. The uh, question is taking off most of it at either end. This was held. Oh, it is held at that end, right? So I can turn this end off. So it's just running there. So this time, rather than moving the tool forward, um, this is kind of fairly well off center. I can pull it onto the edge. So 
uh, wrist on the tool to keep it on the wrist. Right, and there's another stick. 34 to go for the set. And so that'll get cut down and uh, the bead will be in a slightly different position to the other one.